Are you a civilian musician who's ever wondered about joining the military bands program? Are you curious what your options are? Well, today you're going to find out. I'm Alec Wasserman and you're watching Wasserman Music. <laughs> Something that I want you to keep in mind as we're going along here. I am basing the knowledge in this video off of my own experiences as an Army National Guard pianist combined with research that I've done on this topic. But I am not a military recruiter and I am also not a military band liaison. So I'm doing my best here. I also want to say that for the sake of brevity, this is a very broad topic and there's a couple of things that I'm just not going to get to at all so that we don't have a 45 minute long video. All right, with that said, let's get started. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to know is what's out there. What are the differences between the different branches of the military and what types of band units are there? As you can see on this chart, I've grouped the band units into branch and four different categories. I think it's worth noting that at this point, the Space Force does exist, but to the best of my knowledge, they do not have a band unit yet. Let's talk about our first category, Premier Bands. Premier Bands are full-time active duty units that come with special perks because they're the military's best, on par with the musicianship of major civilian orchestras. Some of those perks include being able to, generally speaking, enter the military at a higher pay grade than you would otherwise, and being able to stay in the same unit for an entire career rather than moving around like you would in a regular active duty band. Unlike regular active duty band units, premier bands do not send their members to music school as part of their initial training. Premier bands tend to have specific musical niches that they fill, so they're the only band units in the military where you will find slots for things like orchestral strings, harp, or classical piano. The U.S. Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps and the U.S. Marine Drum and Bugle Corps, also known as the Commandant's Own, come to mind as two of the best examples of a premier band filling a specific musical niche, but that is easily a topic for its own video. Typically speaking, in order to be competitive for an audition for one of these units, you'll need to have a master's degree from a top music school, but that isn't always the case. If you dig through the band unit's websites like I did, you will find biographies for musicians who only have a bachelor's degree, or in some very rare instances, no degree at all. You'll notice that I've put asterisks next to the premier band counts in the Marine Corps and in the Air Force. And that's because the Marine Drum and Bugle Corps and the Air Force Academy Band are both officially considered to be premier bands. However, they do not come with the same pay grade perks. Now let's talk about regular active duty bands. Active duty bands are going to give you probably the most similar experience to the average service member, and you'll work full time for the military. If you go this route, you will periodically change from base to base in what's called a permanent change of station or PCS. In the Marine Corps, the Air Force, and the Navy, this is where you'll find the bulk of the band career field. The level of musicianship in regular active duty bands varies fairly widely from very strong players fresh out of high school all the way to former college music faculty that for one reason or another have decided to join the military. By contrast, National Guard bands are part-time ensembles that will put you through your initial entry training just the same as you would in a regular active duty band. However, after you've graduated from that training, you're only going to work by and large one weekend a month with exceptions in certain situations. Reserve bands have similar obligations to National Guard bands. The difference is in the reserve component, which every branch has a reserve component, you are only attached to the federal government, meaning that the federal government is the person who employs you. If you're in a National Guard band, which only exists in the Army and in the Air Force, you are duly employed with both the federal government and your state or territory's government. Every state has its own National Guard, 
as do the federal territories of Guam, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, as well as our Capital District of Washington, D.C. National Guard and Reserve Bands can be grouped into one larger category known as reservists, since generally speaking, people in these bands do not work full-time for the military. It's also important to realize that in the reservist category, much like in the premier bands, you are auditioning for one specific unit rather than auditioning for the career field as a whole in that branch, and that you can do your entire career with the same unit if you so choose. However, it is my own personal opinion that if you are looking to join as a part-time service member in the band field, that you not worry so much about whether you're looking at an Army Reserve Band, an Air National Guard Band, or an Army National Guard Band, and that you choose the unit that has the right balance of being both close to where you live and offering you the contract that you want. Now let's talk about everyone's favorite topic, money. Money. As you can see on the pay grade chart, the amount of money you'll earn depends on both the type of band that you're entering and the branch that that band is in. For the purposes of this video, I'm really only going to talk about pay grade rather than rank. The two are not the same thing, but they are definitely tied together. It's my own personal thought that if you're like I was about a year and a half ago when I was entering the military, that you're probably more concerned with your potential pay than you are with what your title is going to be. If you enlist in the U.S. Air Force Academy Band or either a U.S. Navy Premier Band, you're going to go to your boot camp as an E3 and then get promoted to E6 once you reach your unit. In the four Army Premier Bands, this is exactly the same, except you will actually go to boot camp as an E4. The U.S. Marine Band, also known as the President's Own, and the U.S. Coast Guard Band allow you to enter immediately as an E6. And that's because, get this, in those units, you get to skip your branch's boot camp entirely. Just let that sink in for a moment. You get to skip any kind of initial entry training and just immediately be an E6 playing music. To me, that's the sweetest deal in the entire military in anything. As I mentioned before, the U.S. Marine Drum and Bugle Corps, also known as the Commandant's Own, and the U.S. Air Force Academy Band are premier bands that do not come with this immediate E6 promotion perk. In the U.S. Marine Drum and Bugle Corps, you will enter as an E2 when you go to boot camp, and you'll probably promote faster than a regular service member. In the Air Force Academy Band, you'll enter boot camp as an E3, and again, you will probably promote faster than a regular service member. Outside of the Premier Bands, your pay grade is determined not so much by whether you are full or part-time, but rather by which branch you're entering at. The Army allows you to come in at E4, which is the highest out of any of the regular bands, whereas in the Marine Corps, you're an E2, and in the Navy and the Air Force, you're an E3. That said, just anecdotally speaking, what I have noticed is that Marines at least tend to promote faster than soldiers do. And I've met soldiers who are on their second enlistment in the band field that are still E4s. And I've met Marines who have told me that in their contracts, they had it that they would be an E5 by the end of their first enlistment. So when it comes to pay grade on the regular side of the band field, you have to pick your poison as far as what you think is most effective. One last nugget here, an E6 with zero years of experience makes roughly about $2,700 a month, whereas an E2 with zero years of experience makes about $1,900 a month. I will also say that base pay is not the entire picture. There are certain allowances that you can get depending on what your life situation is, but that is again a topic for a different video. All right, so the next thing you're probably going to want to know is what type of training you will go through before you get to become a full member of your band. As I mentioned before, the U.S. Marine Band and the U.S. Coast Guard Band do not require any kind of initial entry training and their immediate E6. So seriously, if you're a hotshot musician, go audition for one of those bands. All other premier bands and all Air Force bands only require you to go through your branch's boot camp 
before you reach the unit. In the Army, you'll go through one week of reception and nine weeks of basic combat training at one of four different training posts before you then go to AIT. And for my Army veterans watching this video, I'm just going to say yes, I actually know musicians who have gone to basic training at Fort Benning. After basic combat training in the Army, you will then attend the U.S. Army School of Music for 10 weeks of AIT at Joint Expeditionary Base Little Creek in Virginia Beach. The Marine Corps' initial entry training is a little bit different than the other branches because there are sort of two different phases to their boot camp. They've got recruit training for 13 weeks, and then they have Marine combat training for four more weeks at a different post. So the Marine Corps has the longest amount of time before you actually get to doing any music. Marines then attend six months of the U.S. Naval School of Music, located in literally the same building as the U.S. Army School of Music at Little Creek. Navy musicians go through eight weeks of boot camp, and then they go to six months of the Naval School of Music, similarly to the Marines. By contrast, Air Force musicians only go through their boot camp which is also eight weeks long. Since the Army, Navy, and Marine Corps all do their music training in the same building on the same Navy base, here's a quick explanation of the differences. Like I said before, the Army is only doing 10 weeks of training, so it's way more condensed. The Navy and the Marine Corps have six months, which allows them to dive deeper into subjects such as music theory and aural skills that we also did at the School of Music when I was there with the Army. However, they're obviously gonna have more time to do that with six months as opposed to 10 weeks. The Army has a bit more of a focus on the small pop ensembles, whereas the Navy and the Marine Corps have a bit more of a focus on traditional music. There's really no right or wrong answer as to what amount of training or type of training is right for you. Only you know what your musical ability level is and what your experiences are prior to joining the military. However, I think that you should really consider the fact that, for example, the Marine Corps has the most training before they get to their jobs, so that might be a good option for somebody who's straight out of high school. Whereas, by contrast, in the Air Force, you skip any kind of music training and just do your boot camp. So it all depends on what your situation is and what kind of training you want to go through. <laughs> So in order to join the military, you're going to need to talk to a recruiter. On the Army active duty side, there are also Army band liaisons who act pretty much as regional recruiters just for the bands. I'm not sure about the other branches, admittedly, but I imagine that on their regular active duty sides, they have something probably similar to that. Joining in the National Guard made it really easy for me because I was able to talk to my recruiter about everything related to basic training and everything related to what benefits would be in my contract. On the other hand, I went to my band unit and I had to audition for them specifically and meet all those people. And then I was able to ask them about the entire music side of the deal. <laughs> Something that you have to realize about the military is that once you go to MEPS and raise your right hand like this and sign on the dotted line, you are going to do what they tell you to do. And that means that yes, it is possible to deploy as a military musician. However, I'm going to make an educated guess that that is more likely in the Army and the Marine Corps than it would be in the other branches. It's also a lot less likely for you to deploy if you make it into a premier band. Some common benefits that you may be able to get are a GI Bill, student loan repayment, or an enlistment bonus. All of those things have to be done with your recruiter before you sign your contract. So make sure you know before you go to MEPS whether you have those in your contract. You're not going to get them after you've enlisted. Like I said before, once you go to MEPS and you take that oath, you are in the military, and there's no way around doing certain extra musical things that are part of the deal. You are going to sweep at some point. You're going to do PT on a regular basis. You're going to do all kinds of paperwork and have to just hurry up and wait. Yeah.
This is all part of the deal. But in my view, it's worth it because ultimately you do get paid to play music. So my question for my audience is, what more do you want to hear? Do you want to hear more about this topic? Do you want to hear other musical ideas? Leave those in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Until then, I'll see you next time.